matter in our surroundings. So first of all we have to know what is matter. Matter is everything in this universe. Matter can be defined as anything which has mass and space between them. So if you consider a pen, it's a matter. A piece of chalk is matter. Everything in this universe is matter. So it is defined as anything which has mass and space. So we said matter is everything in the universe. So some examples are a pen, a notebook, anything can be an example for matter. Matter is composed of both chemical nature and physical nature. So physical and chemical. In this chapter, we will be learning about the physical nature of matter. And the first point in that is matter is made up of particles. Matter is made up of particles. And the second point is that how tiny these particles are. That is the size of the particles. Of which matter is composed of. So the first point and the physical nature of matter is that matter is made up of particles. We will have to prove this by doing an experiment. So we will be taking a beaker, consider this as a beaker. So fill it with half of water, add some sugar or salt. We should mark the water level also. Add some sugar or salt. I am taking here as salt. So adding salt and stir it well. So after some time or after stirring it well, you will find that the salt disappears. We will not be able to see the salt anymore. So what happens to the salt or where does the salt disappear? The salt gets spread through the water. The salt spread throughout the water. So the salt is disappeared and the salt is spread throughout the water. What happens is that the salt gets into or get mixed with the particles of uh, the water molecules. That is it gets into the space in between the water molecules. There will be space in between the water as water is made up of mo many molecules. So it get, the salt uh, gets or say the salt will mix and the salt will get into the spaces in between the particles of water. So the next point about the physical nature of the matter is that how small these particles are. We said that matter is consisting of small particles uh, or we said matter is of, made up of particles. So we have to now check how small these particles are or how tiny these particles are. So for this, there is another experiment. That is, take 2 to 3 crystals of potassium per manganese. Crystals. So add it in a beaker of, which is filled with water. 
So you will find that the color becomes violet in so the color is violet now. If you add potassium permanganate crystals into water, what will happen if you dilute this solution? You will find that every time you dilute the solution, the color becomes lighter and lighter and it is still visible as a pale pink color. So we can say that uh, one crystal of potassium permanganate is made up of many many tiny particles. That's why when diluting, the color is still visible. So the next topic is the characteristics of the particles of matter. There are three characteristics of particles of matter. And the first one under this is the particles of matter have space between them. Particles of matter have space between them. That's the first one. The second point is that the particles of the matter are continuously moving. Particles of matter are continuously moving. And the third point is that the particles of matter attract each other. Particles of matter attract each other. So coming to the first point, that is particles of matter have space in between them. We have discussed two activities till now. So um, the first activity we found that when we add salt to the water, which is taken in a beaker, the salt gets disappeared. So we said that, or we concluded that the salt spreads throughout the water. That is the salt gets into the space in between the water molecules. So the water level will not be rising and it gets spread throughout the water. So the next point under the characteristics of the particles of matter is that the particles of matter are continuously moving. Since the sentence itself says that the particles of matter are continuously moving, we can say that the particles possess kinetic energy. Otherwise, it will not be able to move. So particles uh, possess Kinetic energy. So, if uh, we said that the particles are having kinetic energy, so the kinetic energy will increase when the temperature increases. So, when the kinetic energy increases, the particles also will be moving faster. So, as the temperature increases, the kinetic energy of the particle increases. The third point under the characteristics of the particles of matter is that the particles of matter attract each other. So doing an activity, take an iron nail and a rubber band. Hammer both. You will find that the iron nail has greater strength and it will not break. But the rubber band will lose its strength. So after doing this activity, we can conclude that the strength varies from uh, a matter to matter. That is, the force of attraction is different between different particles. So we can conclude that the particles of matter attract each other and this force of attraction is different from matter to matter. The next topic in this chapter is the states of matter. We all know that there are three different states of matter and those are solids, liquids and gases. You, have, you may have learned this in your previous classes too. So first let's look into solids. So solids have their definite shape. Solids have definite shape. They have uh, definite boundaries. Solids have definite shapes, definite boundaries and they even have 
a fixed volume. In solids, the particles of matter are held closer to each other. So, it is very difficult to compress it. Therefore, solids cannot be compressed. They are incompressible. It is very difficult to change the shape of a solid. But a solid can break. When the solid breaks, there is no uh, guarantee that the shape uh, of the solid will change. That is, the solids will maintain a shape, but it may break. Therefore, the solids are rigid. So, once more, solids have definite shape, definite boundaries, they have a fixed volume, they are incompressible and they are rigid. The next state of matter is liquids. We all know that liquids does not have a defined shape. It takes the shape of the container in which it is filled. But the important point is that liquids have a fixed volume. So liquids, no defined shape.